Hi, my name is Amy Garrett. And I work with OSU Extension Service Small Farms Program, and uh, I'm going to be sharing about our 2021 potato variety trials. Also assisting me with this uh, is Lucas Niebert and Chris Homanix of Head, Hands, and Heart. And all of our partner farms are here on this cover slide that I'll mention more in a moment. So before I jump into 2021, I wanted to share what we did the previous year, because uh, the 2021 was the third year of a three-year project. So we grew out the varieties listed here in 2020. Uh, we intended to grow purple Peruvian, but it was sold out and we substituted in uh, French fingerling. Purple Peruvian was a top performer uh, the previous year. And the varieties we grew in 2020 are pictured here. The earlier varieties are there on the top and the later varieties are listed there on the bottom. The results in 2020, um, uh, 2020 was an interesting year. We had the wildfire smoke that was pretty intense in September. And um, some of the um, higher yielding varieties, higher marketable yield were Belmonda, Corolla, Desiree, and Caribe. So in 2021, um, the following um, people listed here on the map are were our participants. So we had participants ranging all the way from Washington. So head, hands, and heart. Uh, Chris Homanix, our uh, potato uh, project, um, one of our leaders, was up in Seattle or uh, near Seattle. And then 46 North Farm was uh, over in the Astoria area, Teresa Retzlaff. Um, we had a couple charter schools. We've been engaging more school gardens in, uh, and school garden educators in our project with um, Luck and Mute Charter School in Kings Valley. And then our uh, main trial at the OSU Vegetable Research Farm was in Corvallis. So we kind of have this um, coast, coast range and valley um, participants in, in Oregon. And then also had Silas Sarvinsky, uh, who is the farm manager at College of the Redwoods. Uh, so uh, for this trial, it's really interesting that we got to have such a wide array of geographic representation here. The varieties that we grow are many of the same ones from the previous year and some new ones. Um, something that we've mentioned the past couple of years is the variety, uh, a consistent availability of organic seed potato varieties has been a challenge. We would have loved to have continued on with some, many of the varieties from 2019, um, but we're un unable to find them the past couple of years. So there's been uh, some standards that we've grown all three years, a couple of them, and then a lot of new ones. Uh, I'll show you a picture of these varieties next. And we do have a, um, a report that we're going to be sharing the link for. So don't worry about um, taking down a bunch of notes because we'll have this all shared in at length and more detail in our report. Um, so this is a poor quality photo taken by uh, yours truly, but it does uh, illustrate um, some of the different attributes of the varieties that we grew. Uh, Belmonda up there at the top. Um, was a one of our later varieties, as was Mondot Gold. So in this photo, we have later varieties up top and the earlier maturing varieties down low. Um, we did have a uh, a blue or purple variety down there, Adirondack Blue, and a and a rosy um, fleshed variety, Adirondack Red, and then a lot of standard yellow um, and red potatoes. So participants that were um, Working with us on this, on this trial, were, uh, we had defined a protocol. So they were receiving um, uh, one replication of one variety was 10 uh, potatoes planted two foot apart. And um, we were uh, giving them enough to do three replications of each variety. We were asking participants to hill when the plants were about one foot tall. And um, some of the later varieties um, may require a second hilling um, if the farmer has uh, the capacity. We were asking that they not irrigate uh, or in situations where they were planting late uh, and the soil was a bit dry, one irrigation was acceptable, but not to irrigate after that because we are trying to evaluate um, and assess uh, the suitability of these varieties for dry farming. And then we were asking um, all of our participants to wait till the plants were mostly yellow brown to harvest. 
So just a snapshot at the um, at the yield from our 21, 2021 trials. Um, as many of you know, um, 2021 was a pretty extreme year. We had the heat dome uh, late June, a uh, pretty hot year. So uh, Belmonda um, was one of our top yielders and uh, Mondock Gold was also up there in the top. A lot of these um, earlier varieties, and I'll show you this in different ways in, a, in some upcoming slides, a lot of these earlier varieties really got shocked in that first heat wave. So much lower yield uh, than we were used to seeing for some of these varieties in previous years. And uh, also notable on this slide is the unmarketable yield of red Pontiac, which I'll show a picture of a bit later. Um, Red Pontiac has been a higher yielder for us in the past couple of years, but on this year, a lot of them were unmarketable. So I'll show you a picture of that in a bit. Um, so for tuber size, this is a great um, graph that uh, Lucas made for us, Lucas Niebert. And um, there, visually, there's some information being communicated. The, um, the gold colored bars were the uh, gold flesh potatoes. Uh, and then the outline for each of those bars um, is indicating um, the skin colors. Um, so Adirondack Red uh, was actually a rosy variety, so it has a lavender filling, but um, it did have a red skin. So you've got visually that information being communicated. And then on the y-axis, uh, we have marketable uh, yield, and um, it's actually average tuber size. Um, so... Uh, red Pontiac it was one of the larger potatoes, set very large tubers with little small tubers attached. Um, Adirondack Blue was also uh, one of our larger sized tubers this year. And um, German Butterball was uh, much set much smaller uh, tubers in 2021. So just looking at tuber size. Um, and this graph is um, communicating a lot of information uh, in one uh, snapshot. Um, so on the y-axis, we have marketable yield per plant. And then on the x-axis, we have days to harvest. So um, if you look at the top of the graph, um, the uh, Belmonda and Mondot Gold, you can see, are, were among our top yielders, which we showed a couple slides ago. And then um, all of these, um, the rest of the varieties were pretty similar and much lower in yield. And you can see the earlier varieties here, the less than 120 days uh, till harvest. These are uh, much lower yield per plant. And then um, another bit of information is being, uh, being communicated here is the tuber size. So the larger dot um, in the middle of these uh, circles is indicating tuber size. So Adirondack red were much smaller than Adirondack blue, for example. So trends in earliness and yield. Um, so uh, in 2019, from 2019 to 2021, we saw some different trends. Um, in 2019 and 2021, um, I'm, uh, we're, il we're illustrating in this graph that um, uh, the later varieties, uh, there was a trend of later varieties yielding more. And then the, except for in 2020. So in 2020, which was the year with the, um, extreme smoke and wildfires happening. Um, uh, we, we saw the opposite trend of um, the earlier varieties performing better. Another thing to note is um, the shade effect. So um, we've been um, growing our OSU lead trials uh, within solar arrays. And um, so you can see in these uh, two pictures on the right, the, the rows on the left are partially shaded and the rows on the right are in full sun. And these pictures here were taking, taken um, July 13th or a couple weeks after that heat dome that we experienced in the Willamette Valley. And you can just see in the picture visually, like looking at the, um, the plants on the right are much smaller here than the plants on the left. And um, this top picture is, is of Adirondack Red. So that was one of our early varieties. And uh, Dakota Rose was another early variety. So you can see visually in the field um, that um, those uh, full sun plants were getting a shock. Um, were pretty stunted after that heat wave and already starting to die back. And you can see here in the graph, looking at on the y-axis, we have yield per plant. And so we have um, the control was an open field nearby, 
And then the green bar is representing those plants on the right row in the picture. And then um, the blue bar is representing those partially shaded plants on the left. So you can see we have a increase in yield, um, increase of marketable yield in those shaded plants in 2021. And this is another way to look at that shading effect that we saw. Um, so we're looking at 2019, we saw about a, a nine and a half um, percent increase in yield over our full sun plants. And then this is just illustrating that in 2020, we saw an actual a decrease in uh, yield in, of the plants in the shade. And then here we are in um, 2021 with the extreme heat and we saw a 20 percent increase in yield of um, our shaded potatoes compared to those in full sun. So the sheltering um, really seemed to benefit the potatoes in this extreme year we had. Another thing that um, I showed you the map at the beginning of where our participants were located. So looking at uh, the climate uh, effects, and, and this is definitely an important consideration when selecting varieties for your, for your site. So we have the red bars are indicating the Corvallis, Oregon, Willamette Valley site. Um, green here, we have um, uh, Silas with, uh, in hum Humboldt, California. And then the blue here is Teresa Retzlaff at 46 North Farm. So you can see even just looking at Belmonda, um, you know, yielded much higher um, in Humboldt than it did even in um, Corvallis. But you can see it, it, it wasn't, um, it did not do great on the coast uh, at 46 North Farm. So and we've seen that in the past and noted last year for our potato trials, papacacho is mentioned here because, and it was only grown by Teresa at, and on the Oregon coast because it was um, not a standout variety and in fact, a lowest yielder last year, but um, she is continuing to grow that one because it, it does quite well for her. So um, location uh, is really an important consideration and climate for your specific location in selecting varieties. The only two varieties we were able to access all three years of this project, uh, and, and again, we were, um, uh, if I haven't mentioned, we've been focusing on organic seed potatoes because most of the growers we work with are certified organic. So German butterball and red Pontiac were the only two varieties we grew all three years. We can see a marketable yield in uh, blue and then unmarketable yield in red. And um, we did not collect unmarketable data in 2019. That's why there are no red bars there. Um, but this is just showing the, of these two varieties, how their yield varied from year to year. So uh, pretty similar, but you can see 2021, or sorry, I'm sorry, 2020 was a, a bit different than 2021. Well, all three years were different. So um, just some observations in the field. Um, I already uh, showed this picture earlier, but just uh, we definitely noticed um, that these partially shaded plants um, really benefited from that shade in this year with the extreme heat. And um, these earlier varieties definitely started dying back early. Another thing um, on the top is pictured a uh, German butterball. Um, and German butterball, we grew um, all three years, but this year, um, almost all the tubers kind of had this scaly skin, um, perhaps a drought stress. And, and then the red Pontiacs, uh, they were setting very large tubers, but they were also had these um, smaller tubers attached, uh, which we hadn't really observed in previous years. So just a brief summary of what we saw um, over the three years. Um, we did see a shade benefit in 2019 and 2021, uh, you know, nine and a half percent increase in 2019, and then uh, a 20% increase in yield of the shaded uh, potatoes compared to the sun, uh, full sun potatoes in 2021. Um, another kind of trend is just that the later varieties tended to outperform the early varieties with that exception of 2020. And yeah, the reasons for that, um, perhaps the wildfire smoke, there could have been other factors. We did start getting early rain that year, uh, did cool off a bit. Um, Chris Homanix might be able to elaborate more on the reasons for that. Um, and then just noting um, in general, uh, in sourcing varieties, if we do identify varieties that are gonna work on our particular site for dry farming, 
um, finding a consistent source, especially for organic seed potatoes, is, uh, is a bit of an obstacle um, to overcome. Uh, we have more details about all the results I shared in our potato report that um, we'll share a link for. And that's it.